Welcome to the Spiritually Inspired Podcast. My name is Sarah Ray. I'm your manifestation coach. And today I'm joined by the beautiful Celia Antonio, who was on Awakening Stories number 16. And she's back to tell us all about EFT tapping. She is a EFT tapping facilitator and a teacher, and she has her own podcast called Openly Spoken, which is amazing. I love it. And it's for spiritual entrepreneurial women. And I have been looking forward to having you back on this podcast for a lot of reasons, mostly because you're lovely and I love talking with you, but also oh. because <laughs> EFT tapping is something that's totally new to me. Um, I'm a total curious beginner and I want to pick your brain and learn all about it because I have a lot of questions. So thank you for being that person for me today. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for having me back. Of I'm course. excited to be here and yeah, I'm excited to talk about tapping because it's really fascinating. <laughs> it really is from all different kind of angles, from a spiritual perspective, from mm -hmm. a psychological and maybe medical too. So how about we just start with the basics? The basic question, what is EFT tapping? Okay, so it's basically a practice uh, where you're tapping on specific meridian points in the body to relieve emotional and physical pain. And in the coaching world, it's it's used as kind of like a supplement for mindset work. So that's okay. like the very basis of where it is. And as far as like a history of where it came from, it was created by someone named Gary Craig, who was actually inspired by a very similar practice called TFT, which stands for Thought Field Therapy. And TFT is like you're tapping on points, but it's like they call it special algorithms. So like you'll tap five times under the eye, five times at the collarbone and five times under the arm for like anger or something like that. Oh, that's okay. not that's not the anger algorithm. I, I don't have that memorized, but that's like an example. Like there, there are these different like recipes, so to speak, of like what you would do for a specific emotion. So this was this TFT practice was created by someone named Dr. Roger Callahan. And um, the practice was inspired by his own studies of like uh, Chinese medicine and acupuncture, acupressure and stuff like that. And because of having knowledge of meridian points he had like the story i was told in my training was that he had this client who was talking to him about like a fear and she felt the fear in her stomach and he knew that there was this uh, stomach meridian that was under the eye so he just like had her tapping under the eye and it like got rid of a phobia of hers so like he started um experimenting with that with other clients and then he ended up this was in the 1980s. So he ended up like oh. recording like audio tapes for how to do this TFT practice. And he sent it to therapists for free. And he was like, I just want to send you this for free. Like, feel free to send me money if you if you think that it's useful. And from what I was told in my training, like everyone he sent it to sent him money because it was useful. Interesting. So it's yeah. fairly recent then. Fairly yeah, new thing. It's, it's a pretty new practice, which I found very fascinating when I found out about that. So then in, in the 90s, there's someone named uh, Gary Craig who is like, you know, this could be maybe a little bit simpler and a little bit easier. So he developed um, he developed EFT, which stands for, an, an, uh, uh, I was going to say energy, emotional freedom technique. Mm -hmm. And with the difference with TFT and EFT, in EFT, you're tapping on like all the points in order and you're saying things out loud versus like in TFT, you're not saying anything out loud and you're like only tapping like three points or maybe even one point based on what you're trying to release. Interesting. So, yeah. So it's a, it's a new practice and it's, I think it still has a lot of room for developing. Like we'll get into, we'll get into that. Like I'm sure as you ask me more questions. Um, yeah, <laughs> that is really interesting because I, okay, I'm glad you brought up the saying words thing. Cause that is kind of the thing that's tripping me up the most when I've been doing following videos on YouTube. All I mm -hmm. know is that I, I feel good afterwards, but I don't mm -hmm. really understand why, which is why I wanted to talk to you about this in more detail. <laughs> I've noticed that the words that we say when we're tapping, they're not like affirmations. There'll be something like, mm -hmm. even though this doesn't feel good right now, yeah. I am willing to release it. So yeah. if, why is that? How come you phrase it in that way? That's actually like my favorite part about EFT because you're like being honest about how you feel. 
And that's the whole, the whole thing is about like bringing what is subconscious to your conscious mind. So like subconsciously, you might feel that you're not worthy of clients. So like you're saying that out loud as you're tapping, but the, the phrasing is very intentional. The phrasing is like, even though I feel or think blank, I completely accept myself. So you're like not having judgment towards yourself. And that's just how you start it out. And then as you move through, so like what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to measure yourself from like a rate of one to 10, or some people like to do negative 10 to positive 10 mm -hmm. before you tap. And then you do the like, quote, negative phrase where you say like, even though I feel I'm not worthy of money, clients, whatever it is that your goal is. I completely accept myself and you go through all the points and then when you get to like about a five and you're feeling yourself like if you're doing the one through ten scale if you get to about a five if you're doing negative ten to positive ten once you get closer to like zero then you can start the opposite which isn't super opposite like it's very minor tweaks so for example, the phrase that I gave was, even though I don't feel worthy of clients, I completely accept myself. Then you would say something about like, I am I am worthy of clients and I completely love and accept myself. Or you can even be a little bit more gentle like and say something like, I am starting to feel worthy of clients. Because I think what, even with like doing simple affirmations, like it's very important that you choose something that you can really fully get behind. Oh, yeah. I just talked about this in the podcast episode I recorded two days ago. I totally <laughs> agree. <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's kind of why, like you said, it's the best part of tapping because you are being honest with yourself. You're saying, you know what? I feel this mm -hmm. way right now. While some affirmations might have like a fake it till you make it sort of vibe, that might yeah. work for some people, but probably isn't going to be the most effective for some others. Mm -hmm. And and because you're acknowledging what you actually feel instead of bottling it up, like you you can actually like release it instead of like letting it become a bigger problem than it needs to be. So that's why I love EFT. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so you mentioned meridians. I am mm -hmm. familiar with meridians, but just to have a nice holistic episode here, can we talk a little bit more about what meridians are? Yeah. So meridians are like energy highways in the body. So it's like channels where your where your energy moves through in the body. So in yoga, I think they're called nadis. In um in Chinese medicine, the meridians have energy going through them, which they call qi. Um, and these points move all throughout your body. So with the tapping points, the the points that they tap on an EFT tap on meridian points that are connected with emotion. So for example, uh, top of your head is one of the points and that is touching something called the governing vessel, which is the very first meridian. I found this really interesting. It's the very first meridian that uh, forms after you've been conceived. Oh, so cool. that like, yeah. So that like sets the tone, I guess, for all your, the rest of your energy as you're forming as a little fetus <laughs> as a little a wee baby <laughs> that yeah. is interesting so i don't know if you know the answer to this question but how many meridians are there in the body oh i don't know the answer to that question actually but it's not like three here or four there right it's just they're kind of just everywhere that's because that's my understanding anyway yeah okay. i think they're everywhere i'm not sure but with eft like the reason why i mentioned earlier was that like i feel like it can still be developed there aren't that many tapping points. And when I did my own research of like, why do we tap on these points? What are the meridians? I found like even more points in the body than I'm like, why don't we tap on this point? <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm glad that you brought up the tapping points because the few videos that I followed on YouTube, that's always in the same order. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Brad Yates, I believe his name is. He starts with the hand, like on the outer side of the wrist. And then he starts at the top of the head, as you mentioned, and then forehead mm -hmm. under the eye, temple under the eye. Uh, I can't remember if it's lips or chin, but like on like this part of your face. Yeah. And both, then your actually. collarbone. Mm -hmm. Oh, both. Okay. So and then mm -hmm. collarbone and then under the arm. And it's yeah. always in that order. Yeah. Is that 
part of the practice or could I go in any order or am I tra- or crossing into TFT territory if I do mm-hmm. anything different? So what's interesting was when I was in my EFT practitioner training, we started by the eyebrow. Okay. And then moved our way and like top top of the head was last. But then when I did my master EFT practitioner practitioner training, we started from the top of the head. And the karate chop point is always where we start at okay. because what I was told was that it like starts to open up your energy channels. And okay. in the training that I did, um, you can go through with clients. You can go through them with like limiting beliefs and like doing some coaching about that. And before you even say anything out loud, you can tap on the points in order just to kind of like get energy flowing, you know, just to kind of like maybe there's something energetically being blocked. And I like to also think of like what chakras are being affected. For sure. Yeah. So like tapping like right here, I'm like, maybe there's something like in my third eye that's blocked and maybe this is like helping release it. So that's why I say again that like I feel like EFT can still be developed so much. It's so young and there's so many other things energetically in our body that can be added to like even to deepen the practice even more. For sure. Absolutely. And I'm sure this exists somewhere out there as like an encyclopedia, but how do Mm -hmm. you know which tapping point corresponds with which points in the body? Because earlier you mentioned Mm -hmm. under the eye was for the stomach for that one particular client. So how do mm-hmm. I know where to where to tap for certain things? Or should I just always go in order to sort of default? Well, with, with EFT, it always goes in an order because that was how the guy Daniel, Gary Craig, not Daniel Craig, Gary Craig kind of created it to be like very simple, very like one size fits all, like anyone can practice it. So all the points are specific to like what... Um, what affects our emotions so like top of the head is the the um governing vessel which is like that first meridian point that create that is created when we're conceived and that is tied to feelings of like embarrassment uh trust issues dishonesty even like depression stuff like that and like moving down the uh eyebrow point that is the meridian for your bladder so that's a good point to tap on for like fear, jealousy, if you're like suspicious about someone or have like, like, hmm, what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like, there's, do you want me to go through all the points? Please do. Yes. Okay. I'm like sitting and, here like super eager. <laughs> I'm actually going to take off my glasses because it'll be easier to tap. And then there's side of the eye and the uh, side side of the eye. And then you go through the under eye here. Okay. And then the upper lip, mm-hmm. under the chin, the okay. collarbone. You're going like, you're going like right under the collarbone, kind of like if there was a center point between the pit of your throat and your shoulder. So like right here. So, but not actually on the bone, but right beneath it. Not on the bone. Yeah, oh, I've been doing that it. wrong. Okay, mm-hmm. excellent. And then under the arm, kind of like in line with. The apex of your chest. Okay. Kind of like where your bra strap might be. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Exactly. So you mentioned that the third eye was related. Uh, no, side. No, you just said <laughs> but one of them was related to uh, your bladder, kind of those lower chakra areas that was th- mm-hmm. between the brows, right? Mm-hmm. So, how are the other tapping points affected throughout the rest of the body? Can we go through that? Yeah, so the side of the eye is the gallbladder meridian. Okay. So that one is good for uh, jealousy, fear, stuff like that. Um, uh, Anger, depression, frustration. And then uh, also a little side note, the EFT tapping points, like you don't necessarily have to understand like which meridian point you're tapping on to uh, like have a shift i feel like these points might be more uh important if you're doing the tft where you're just gonna like all right i'm just gonna tap my bladder meridian because i'm feeling scared and like under the eye because like i'm feeling fear in my stomach but um it's still fascinating to go through. it really so, is yeah for sure yeah i appreciate that because that's that was something that i intuitively knew that i didn't 
I know I don't need to know anything about this. I just know that it makes me feel good. But mm-hmm. now I'm just interested in learning more. So I, I'm yeah, glad you and, brought that up. Mm-hmm. And it's also fascinating to like know why something yeah. works a specific way. So then we have under the eye, which is the stomach meridian. So like you might feel like anxiety in your stomach. You might feel like some people can feel like sadness there or depression there, slowness in like making decisions. And then um, I like to tie that with like the uh, solar plexus. So like Mm -hmm. if you have trouble taking action as well. Uh, Under the nose is again that governing vessel. So that very first meridian. So that's a very powerful point. And then under the chin is the central vessel. And this one's really cool because it runs up the center of your body from your pubic bone and all the way to your upper lip. Okay. So it's like very powerful energy highway. <laughs> For sure. And then um, the collarbone is the kidney meridian. Okay. So that one's good for like insecurities, uh, fears, um, also like lower chakra stuff because it's the kidneys. Mm-hmm. And then we have under the arm, which is the spleen. So anxiety and if you have trouble with like overthinking and stuff like that. And then very interesting This I haven't really found on like YouTube or like even when I first worked with a one-on-one coach who used EFT in her um, one-on-one coaching. There's also points in the hand. So after you go through and you do the underarm point, you can tap at the inside part of the thumb. Like right here? Yeah, the, the inside of the like nail right here. Oh, okay. We like to go to the camera for for our people on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so like if you were to put your thumb close to your index finger, that's the side of your thumb. No, you're tap. tapping you're tapping on the like nail. Right oh, here. okay. Got it. Oh yeah. I think I have like a weird angle. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's always like hard to maneuver. Okay. And then moving through the fingers in that way. So then you're tapping you're tapping the pointer finger. Okay. And then the middle finger the ring finger, and then you're ending at the outside portion of the pinky. And you would go in that order, thumb to pinky? You'd go, you'd go in that order. Interesting. And how does mm-hmm. that help us? I think that was just that was just added by, there's this woman who then took EFT and added more points and called it like EFT energy. I know that one of the fingers, I don't remember which one, one of the fingers is tied to the heart. Mm. So, so that's very powerful. And like m- me, when I go through it, I just feel like, I feel this like buzzing feeling. Like you mentioned that you've done this before. Like there's this like, I just feel a shift. Like I don't, it's not something that I necessarily like know cognitively in my brain, like, but like, I just feel different. I totally agree. <laughs> I totally agree. And because I just did it because um, I was introduced to it by Laura Powers when I interviewed her. Mm-hmm. Um, so I decided to just kind of dive in and started doing it. And I was like, I don't really know why this feels good, but it does. And mm-hmm. then I just, the more I did it, I was like, I, I really want to understand, but mostly because it's interesting, like you said to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you definitely don't need to know the details to make yeah. it work for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's why people like you are fantastic because we can still have like someone to look forward to towards like being the facilitator and a mentor and know that we're doing it quote properly so we mm-hmm. get the the most benefits even if we don't necessarily cognitively understand because it's so young like you said yeah yeah i think the practice definitely will either it'll deepen or like another kind of similar practice will be born out of this mm-hmm. like for example when i did my research on the meridian points I had this kind of thought of like, so in our society, this this might be kind of off topic, but I'm going to really try to like relate it to EFT. In our okay. society, we have these like uh, traumas and like shame around our body. Mm-hmm. And, and there are some meridian points that are on parts of the body that like in a professional setting wouldn't be appropriate. Like right under the nipple is your liver meridian. And like your liver is tied to like anger. So like, why wouldn't you tap there? <laughs> right. But so maybe like, not while in your cubicle. Yeah. Maybe it. not in a professional setting, but like yeah. in doing my own research of the Meridian points, like I've like done that on myself and I'm like, oh, this is nice. Like maybe I can add 
other points throughout my body. There's also like a point like right above, right above your pubic bone is a very powerful meridian point too. That's, that's that um, same meridian point that ends by your chin. Okay. So that's like the beginning of it. You said it was above the pubic bone? Yeah. Okay. Above it. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, that's really cool. (laughs) Do you um, have like a, maybe a reference that we could look at if we want to learn more about meridians? Yeah, I'm actually going to give you like a little freebie that you oh, can like. Oh, yes. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. Okay, we'll let's do lay like that little... on us right now so we yeah. don't forget. And then we can just keep going forward with some questions that I have for you. So go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um. So the the freebie? Yes. Like please explain do. it? Yes. So uh, I guess I'll give you the link to put like in the show notes. And mm-hmm. what I'll include in there, I'll include like a little... I have like a little illustration of like the face and like all the points in the face and the uh, like side of the, the under the arm and, and the hands. So I'll, inc- I'll include that in there. And uh, also like a little information about like what EFT is and a little basics of how to do your phrasing. Oh my gosh. And um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. So you're welcome. <laughs> That's very helpful. Um, oh my gosh. Now I'm excited. <laughs> and I'm distracted. Okay. Cause that is, that's exactly what I wanted to learn where the points and the mm-hmm. phrasing, the phrasing in particular had been really like tripping me up a little bit because I wasn't sure why things are being phrased that way. And you talked about that a little bit already and how, um, to do that on my own. Like once I master the points to tap through, which I, mm-hmm. at this point, I understand what order I should be going in. How do I know how to phrase these things so that it's useful and helpful? So mm-hmm. that will be quite useful i'm yeah. confident <laughs> amazing <laughs> and and then with the phrasing too like doing it uh with a coach you can get even deeper with the phrasing because in our training we're trained to like ask specific questions to really get deeper into what it is that you're feeling because like you might come into tapping and being like i want to tap on i don't know money mindset but if you work with a coach and you come to them and you say like, all right, I like, I want to really adapt a growth mindset and get rid of like all these scarcity blocks I have, then they're going to sit with you and ask you specific questions and you're going to have these like revelations because things that you are not conscious of is going to come to the surface and then you end up tapping on that thing. So sure. That's the like difference with like working with a coach and doing it, doing it on your own, but you can definitely, you can definitely do it on your own as well. Right. Yeah. Can I tap without saying anything? I think you can. Yeah. Because in, in the training that I did specifically the master EFT training, we did tapping just without saying anything. And the instructor like told us like if you're if your client is ever getting stuck like just have them tap at least at the karate chop point to just like release some stuff and there's also like breath work tied into it like every session should start with breathing deeply and connecting with your heart i also like to add my own um grounding as a lot of it's like a signature of like my work yeah, so I like sure. to do like grounding before a session just to get us really like intentional and focused. So awesome. That yeah. totally took all one of the questions I wanted to ask, which was what does a EFT session look like? Oh, so you totally <laughs> just did it. So um, except for I do have another another question. How long am I doing this mm. for? Like how um how many cycles am I going yeah. through the tapping points? That's a good question because when I first did EFT tapping I remember it was like um I was given the script by my one-on-one coach and it was about money mindset and I really had to do the quote negative phrase a few times before I was like all right I'm ready to move on so it really depends but really the importance is to rate the intensity of what you're feeling either from a one to ten scale So like, how anxious are you feeling from a scale of one to 10 and write that down, or you can do negative 10 to positive 10, write it down and then like do the quote negative, like, Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't. Yeah. Air quotes for sure. (laughs) Yeah. Air quotes, negative. Do, do that at least three times, see how you feel and write that number down again. And, um, if you're doing the one through 10 scale, if you're at about a five, 
then you're ready to move to the more positive. Or if you're doing negative 10 to positive 10, once you're at like zero or one, then you're ready to move on. So it really depends on the day, depends on how you're feeling that day. But you can really get a shift within like five minutes. It really doesn't take that long, but sometimes it will take longer. It's just a matter of being like patient with yourself and not judging yourself and mm -hmm. really allowing it to, to work for you. Because I remember the first time I did that, like I had to do the like negative uh, cycle like nine times. <laughs> But then I really felt, and and that like that moment was like, all right, I want to be an EFT practitioner because this actually works. Yeah. Whereas before I was like, eh, I don't know, this is like some magical hocus pocus. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, if it's magical hocus pocus, you can count me in, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so that is amazing. Um, I am wondering how can I incorporate this with like a already pre-existing formal air quotes formal meditation practice like if i already mm -hmm. am in the habit of sitting for 10 to 15 minutes 20 minutes a day in meditation how can yeah. i bring this together with that mm -hmm. i think it can be added in either before or after a meditation practice depending on what feels resonant to you i would say maybe like it can be very, like, now that I'm thinking about it, it can be very helpful to, like, kind of release anxiety or fear. Or maybe if when you're sitting, there's, like, something that's really on your mind, it can help you to really, like, release that, to do that first and to then sit there. Mm -hmm. And I love that you bring up meditation because, like, one of the benefits to EFT is just, like, a deeper self-awareness because you're connecting with like the truth of how you really feel that's why when we say something out loud it's not like an affirmation of like i am confident like you're actually being honest about how you feel right so well, then you uh, can move to that affirmation and it'll be more true yeah for you. yeah exactly exactly and it'll be more powerful that way and like um it's very important too with affirmations to connect on the emotional level you know that's why I like to say this on Instagram all the time yeah. that um, mindset isn't everything. Energy is everything because energy is like that layer behind mindset. Mindset, yes, is so important, but I feel like mindset is like a little layer that's on top of your energy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's true. I love that visualization because that's absolutely <laughs> true. Yeah. So that and you touched on another question that I wanted to ask you, which is your personal experience with EFT. Like what what shifts have you experienced? And you you answered this already, but I would love to hear more about why you decided to incorporate this with your coaching. Mm -hmm. EFT really helped me the most with two things. It helped me with money mindset and it helped me with confidence on showing up on live videos. Which you do so, excellently. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> when I started showing up on live video, it was maybe about a year ago. And even though I looked confident on the outside, on the inside, I, it was like an anxiety fire happening. And I just was really good at like putting on a nice face. But um, once I discovered EFT, it really allowed me to release those fears and release release uh, insecurities and release like caring about what other people thought. And it really helped me show up in a more grounded way. Yeah. You know, especially tied with the beginning it with breath work and adding my own like grounding practice right before tapping. And then it also helped me with money mindset because I feel like something, something very powerful that happens with EFT after you go through the air quote negative, <laughs> negative phrases, and then you say a positive phrase, especially when it's a phrase that maybe is given to you by a coach. For example, in, with my money mindset, the coach I was working with gave me this phrase of like, I see other women doing this, so it's possible for me too. And like when she said that and I was tapping on it, like you can just see by looking at my face that like my energy changed. Like yeah. I would like smile. <laughs> I love that. That one I'm going to bookmark and definitely remember it. That's empowering for not only us, but for all women everywhere. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that one. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So this EFT tapping has been 
helpful for me. I, I haven't been doing consistently, but I really would like to, which is why I wanted to ask about doing it for meditation as well, because I have that mm -hmm. down and how do I mm -hmm. add it back in? So um, mm -hmm. is this something that I could safely do on a daily basis? Should I be doing it on a daily basis? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It can safely be done on a daily basis. And for me personally, I like to practice. I actually have an alarm on my phone for noon. I like to practice it in the very middle of the day because I start my mo my morning off with like breath work and grounding and being slow. But in the middle of my day, like I'm the day kind of like hardens me where I'm like, oh, this has to get done. That has to get done. So it's a really good check in for me to like just release my anxiety or fear or whatever it is I'm feeling that day through EFT for like 10 minutes. And it's just wild how a 10 minute thing can just really shift you and like set you, set you in this like better, I'm not speaking correctly, but like, <laughs> it's hard <laughs> you know to put what I mean. words. I do. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my gosh. I think you've answered all my questions, all mm -hmm. my beginner questions. And I, it doesn't seem like it's the type of thing where it takes a lot of practice to do it well. You know what mm -mm. I mean? Yeah. I think it's very approachable and it's yeah. a very, and I think that was, um, that was Gary Craig's idea. He was like, I want this to be more beginner friendly because the TFT, which came first had like a specific formula to it. Like if you feel anxiety, tap here five times, tap there five times, tap here 15 times. And like, that's not very easy to memorize unless like you have like intentionally sit and practice it. Mm -hmm. But the EFT, like it's always in the same order. You can literally just say out like you can also use it for physical pain. I haven't had experience with um, I don't work with clients who have physical pain and I don't I haven't worked on that like personally. But you can literally just tap and be like, my knee hurts. My knee hurts. My knee hurts. My knee hurts. <laughs> like, and then you would switch it to my knee feels better. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be the positive one, maybe. Okay. The positive air quotes. <laughs> interesting. That is an interesting take as well, because in theory, all affirmations work like that, right? Or all phrasing mm -hmm. works that way, where even if you're not tapping, you could acknowledge it and then you could turn around. That's cognitive therapy. Um, mm -hmm. I believe I said that right, or that's the correct <laughs> name, but yeah, that is essentially what cognitive therapy is. But mm -hmm. then when you're tapping on the meridians, you're releasing it on an energetic level as well, mm -hmm. rather than just in the mindset, kind of that layering that you had mentioned earlier. Exactly. And that's, that's another reason why I love EFT is because it includes the body. Mm -hmm. And, um, I fully believe that like your mind can believe something, but once your body is behind that thought and your body believes it that is when it's going to manifest for you. And and only then is when it's going to manifest for you. I absolutely agree because that's, you know, the mind is very 5D, right? But our bodies are 3D and mm -hmm. we're in the 3D reality right now. So I totally mm -hmm. agree with that. <laughs> this has been so much juicy EFT tapping goodness. I don't feel like a beginner anymore and I appreciate <laughs> that. So Yay. you have our generous, you're generously giving us your freebie illustration with the tapping points and how to phrase and all that good stuff, which the links will be in the show notes for that. So how about you take a moment now to tell us a little bit more about how we can work with you. Tell us about your classes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have my signature offer is a four month one-on-one mentorship called Grounded Growth. And I'm basically here to help you deepen your self-love so that you can have grounded growth in your relationships, personal life, and your business. And I also, at the time of this recording, I'm about to host an EFT tapping session. And it may or may not still be available when this comes out, <laughs> but we will see. Yeah. And uh, yeah. But that's something so that you I, do with your clients, right? Yeah. It's something yeah. that I that I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients. So it's something, it's like one of the many tools that might come out when we have a one-on-one -on -one call. So yeah. Amazing. <laughs> I knew you had that coming up. So I wanted to get more information about that. So <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Celia, for generously sharing your knowledge with us. Head over to her podcast next called Openly Spoken. It's amazing for <laughs> spiritual entrepreneurial women, all that amazing stuff. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for having me back. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Absolutely.